Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. Something wrong? Patrick? You're sweating. Out of all the artists who have influenced me, there is only one who has had the biggest impact, and that would be Simon Stalinag. To the point that I literally have a desktop folder full of 4K versions of his work, just so I can zoom in and study every individual brushstroke. But underneath all his crazy brushwork and uncanny scenery, I've noticed just one thing about his work, and it's that bloody filter he puts on every painting. I don't know what it is about film grain or fiber, but it just gives his paintings a little bit extra crispiness. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make that textured overlay in Photoshop. Now for this filter to look good, make sure your painting is using a high resolution, otherwise the filter could appear blurry. The painting you see here is about 10k. If you want to follow along, I left a link to this painting in the description. First, open up your finished painting and bring up the History tab, and create a copy of that painting in a new file. Close your original painting, then save the new copy with the subtitle Filter. Go into your layer settings and flatten that copy. Unlock the background and duplicate it. Name it Image Check and then hide it. Keep this layer at the top at all times, as we will be using it to check that our final result remains consistent. Now create a group and call it Texture. In that group, create a subgroup and call it White Texture. Go down and click on Pattern. Select a pattern texture which best suits your painting and resize it so it's not too big. Set that pattern's texture blend mode to divide and reduce its opacity to 50%. Open up the adjustments toolbar and add a curve. Attach that curve to the pattern texture with a clipping mask. Make adjustments to the curve so the pattern is less bright. You can also remove the masks for the pattern and the curve as we don't need them. Next, unhide your image check layer and copy your painting. Create a mask for your white texture group. Paste the copy of your painting into the mask. You should see a black and white version of your painting. Go to Image and Adjustments and select Levels. Adjust the levels so you have a harsh contrast image. This will make your white texture only appear in the bright tones of your painting. Feel free to undo or repaste, then readjust the mask levels until you get your desired result. Once you are satisfied with your pattern's size, select its layer and then select a paintbrush. Click on it. This will rasterize it, which will reduce its memory usage. Now we have a simple texture filter, but let's go a little bit further. Hold Alt and drag the white texture group up to duplicate it. Name it Black Texture. Now this texture will appear in the dark spots of your painting. Select the mask, go to Image and select Invert. Then select the pattern and set its blend mode to Multiply. Now let's zoom in on your texture filter. If you're like me and you use hard brushes, then you don't want the texture to have soft edges. So select the pattern layer, go to Filter and select Sharpen and Sharpen More. That will harden the edges and make it pop more. Set the black texture's pattern opacity back to 100%. Let's reduce the intensity of the black texture's mask. Again, copy the painting into the mask, then invert it. Adjust the levels until you get the result you want. Then reduce the overall group's opacity to around 50%. Reduce the opacity for the white textures group to 70%. These settings can also be up to your personal preference. Now we have set up the texture filter, but there is a problem. These filters are causing the original painting to become slightly brighter. To fix this, we need to go into the Adjustment Tools and select the Brightness and Contrast tool. Add one to your black texture group, then duplicate it to your white texture group. Now we need to tweak the brightness and the contrast so it roughly matches with our image check layer. This will ultimately be up to you on how closely you want it to match. Now lastly, let's add a little bit of damage to our canvas. Go to Patterns and select a painterly style pattern. Set it to divide and then add a curve and clip it to the pattern. Adjust the curve's levels so it blends into the painting. 
then reduce its opacity to 50%. And that should do it. Now a little warning before you save. If you flatten the image, you may see a slight change in the contrast compared to your original painting. This is due to Photoshop's anti-aliasing and performance algorithms not giving you the full picture. Add in a curve and saturation layer and adjust their values for the flattened image until it roughly matches up with your image check. I would also add some sharpness to your final image as it will help remove soft edges and help keep the hard brush aesthetic. But ultimately, it will be up to you to call the finished design, which in my opinion is a pretty good enhancement to have on top of your painting. Make sure to put this group collection into an empty PSD file so you can access it whenever. But if you want to support me or take a shortcut, I'm also selling this filter on my Patreon and Gumroad, so feel free to swing by or recommend it to a friend. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more content.